host here at Sohi here. Welcome to the Ringer NBA channel. We're back to give you more coverage of Women's March Madness, including Caitlin Clark, Juju Watkins, Paige Beckers. And it's been, man, it has been a fun opening two rounds. There's a lot to talk about. I'm going to start off with, uh, with Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes pulling out a really ugly win against West Virginia. And basically this game if you knew how West Virginia played, kind of played out the way we expected it to. They were staunch, aggressive on defense. They used all their fouls. They are uh, extremely prone on doing that. I know that a lot of people are talking about the foul discrepancy. I think on some level that's fair. Um, I will say that if uh, if the NCAA wanted the Hawkeyes to have an easy ride, they probably wouldn't have made them play West Virginia and given them the bracket that they've given them. But yeah, West Virginia is a team that just frankly, it fouls a lot. And it was a big change in the second half, the way that they were officiating that game. So you weren't dreaming if you were seeing that, but I do think that there were tactical reasons for that foul disparity. But moving on to the actual game itself, like we had a lot of interesting thing, things happen. Let's start with like some ugly Iowa stats. Uh, Caitlin Clark, six turnovers, three steals, Five from 13 from three, and the rest of the team was 0 from 8, which is a problem both, in my opinion, in accuracy and volume when you're talking about the defensive coverage that we were seeing. Uh, the team itself made 17 field goals, 15 turnovers, seven, just seven assists. That's, that's not great. That's not great. Now, Iowa had two other games this season where they scored less than 70 points. Both of them were losses. In Caitlin Clark's career, they're three and eight when they score less than 70. So I think that there are two ways of looking at this. You can basically say, hey, this is a bad omen for a team where things are only going to get hard- harder. This, they're about to play um, a Colorado team on Saturday that you know plays a similar style to West Virginia. You won't see the full court press as much, but they have some really aggressive defenders um, and they also have Aronette Vonley, who had seven steals in her last game. Um, and I've got some questions about Hannah Stalky basically there. You know, I, she has grown so much this season, but we're going to need a lot more ball control from her. We're going to need to see her just be a lot stronger with the basketball. I think that West Virginia was really targeting her when they took the ball out of Caitlin's hands, put it in hers and then basically made her make a decision. She often held it for a really, really long time. Um, and you can't you can't do that against Vonley. She will have more of a height advantage in this game, though. So I think you can see a little bit more of like the classic sort of pick and roll game. You're also going to need the Iowa shooters to show up. Um, I also, I got to touch on the fearlessness of Sydney Falter, uh, who is, you know, he's, he's gotten more of an opportunity because of the injury to Molly Davis, which they are also going to need Molly Davis back at some point here because... Um, you know, they can't, they can't, I don't think they can afford to have another game like this. I think that it's great that they were able to pull this one out, but this is not Iowa style. And bringing back Molly Davis, that allows Caitlin Clark to play off the ball more in situations like that where she was getting pressured as much as she was. I think that, you know, in a Molly Davis game, they break that full court press um, a little bit more easily. But back to Sydney of Falter, um, one of the final plays of the game, they get the rebound and Clark is basically, you know, begging for the ball, as as we have seen her do many a time. And if Fulter knows that she has a step on her opponent and is going in transition and all the attention is on Caitlin, um, she takes it coast to coast, gets an and one. And she was one of the few players in this game that I thought, you know, the, the lights felt like they were a little bit big. It felt like Iowa was settling into the amount of pressure that they are going to be seeing. Um, we're going to need also just better shooting. In my opinion, I mean, in anybody's opinion, actually, from everybody else on the Iowa roster, uh, Kate Martin, the glue, came in clutch with uh, with 10 rebounds, despite the fact that she wasn't shooting the ball well, uh, Gabby Marshall. But we are going to need to see that from them because uh, Colorado, going to be much of the same, going to be much of the same here. Moving on, another thing that people have been talking about quite a bit this week so far has been Caitlin Clark versus Paige Beckers. Um, UConn had an awesome game against Syracuse, which is to say really like, I, this just has to begin in, in praise of Paige Beckers. Just, oh my God, what a masterclass in seamlessly dissecting everything that a Syracuse zone early in the game seemed like it was going to be able to keep them in the game. You know, you saw a little bit of struggle from UConn and how to deal with that, but Paige Beckers, man, she was just, I don't think you can say enough. She was surgical in her just precise handling 
of that zone. You know, it started off in the game where she's cutting right into the middle of the zone, which is exactly what you want to do. You know, just getting off these short mid-range jumpers or dumping the ball off also to Aaliyah Edwards. And, you know, you get down later in the game, she is hitting her three. She is finding the the angle on angles on three-point shooters. She is, you know, they, they change their coverages up. They, they, they move up a little bit in the mid-range. She just kind of snuffs it out the entire game. I mean, like any anybody who's listening to this, you, you got to go watch the highlights of that game. It was just tactically genius and cold-blooded, which is, I mean, what we have come to expect from Paige Beckers, but it's created this conversation largely also because of the work that she and, and UConn in general did on the defensive end. The second half of the game, she got a lot of the responsibility of guarding uh, Deisha Fair after Nico Mule fouled out. Nico Mule also, by the way, you know, blocking jumpers did an excellent job in that game as well. But, you know, Paige had a great all around game where she was vital. She came out in the second half just like totally demon mode, just steals a ball on the inbound, like just immediately just sets the tone for the rest of the game. So you can see why we're having this conversation. Now, the way that I would put it is that Caitlin Clark has certainly had the better season. You know, the Naismith Player of the Year finalists just came out. Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, Juju Watkins, among the um, among the top uh, people for that award. I think it needs to go to Caitlin Clark in terms of her body of work. She led the nation in scoring in passing, obviously, you know, record-breaking season on so many fronts. But I do think that we did see a better overall game from Paige here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more of this because she has such a great all-around game. And the other thing is that UConn, they're not deep this season. They have a ton of injuries um, and they're pretty front-loaded. So they need a lot from her. And I think that the way that Paige was able to dissect that zone versus what Caitlin did, the logo threes um, basically just being, you know, the, the main scoring option and taking some of her more lower percentage shots is something that scared people. And I think that that's fair because as much as we love the logo shots, we need to see some of the other stuff from Caitlin Clark. I do think that we will get it down the line though. And I mean, like, frankly, Iowa has to, but my question is like, what, what do we need from, what does UConn need? basically, to keep it going? Like, how far can they go with this basically blunted six-man rotation that they're playing um, against a Duke team that has been incredibly impressive? Um, they have made it farther than any other seven seed in the tournament so far. And I almost want to look ahead a little bit with respect to Duke and Baylor to a potential Elite Eight matchup between USC and and UConn. Um, now, USC has been incredible. Uh, we obviously know Juju Watkins. Uh, she's next. She is an incredible freshman and is not really playing like a freshman in this tournament. She just looks so ready for the moment. And we've known this all season. This is the only reason that USC has such a high seed. They are way, way ahead of schedule, and they've done a great job of also putting veterans around her. We've talked about Juju and the nerds before everybody's talked about it. I always have to shout out Kayla Padilla. I love her. Um, you know, you just can't leave her open. And that's that's a really, really tough proposition when you have a player like Juju who can basically do anything on the court. Like, I don't even know what to call her. Like, you know, it's like a combination of so many things. She's like modern Maya Moore, Candace Parker, like a heliocentric Carmelo Anthony, but she's also got an incredible defensive edge, but she can do anything on the court. And she's also like starting to extend her range. We're seeing more of those logo shots. She's such an exciting player and she's so difficult to stop it, when you surround her with shooters the way that USC has all season. I mean, they almost, they look like a modern NBA team oftentimes, just like, you know, if you want to think about like Luka Doncic and a at a spread four, just like with the way that uh, that Juju Watkins is able to just spray out passes, skip passes across the court, using her size, her strength, her her burgeoning vision. Um, it's it's been awesome to watch, and uh, that's just gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. I have to obviously talk about Mackenzie Forbes, twenty one point five points in her last four games, going back to their win against UCLA in the Pac twelve semifinals. Um, she has turned on right at the exact right moment. And this is a USC team. They're also shooting incredibly well right now. We'll see if that lasts. But if there ever was a time to catch fire, it's right now. So I personally think we're headed to a collision course in the Elite Eight with the two of those teams. 
And, you know, it kind of makes me wonder, like, I'm watching, I'm watching Nico Mule's perimeter defense. I'm watching her, her block shots on the perimeter. I'm watching Ashlyn Shade's closeouts. I'm watching Paige uh, Becker's help side recovery, her block shots. We had multiple block shot, block jumpers in that game against Syracuse. The way that they slowed down De'Asha Fair in the first half, which is not an easy task. And I'm also I'm looking at Aaliyah Edwards, her at the rim with her protection. And I'm kind of wondering, is this like, can this UConn defense, can they be the ones that slow down Juju Watkins? Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I, that one's a wash for me. I have, uh, I have in my bracket... I've got USC going, but increasingly I'm like, I don't know. I'm not I'm not really sure what's going to happen next. We can't wait to come back and break down the rest of the action with you. Uh, if you want to hear more, you know, like, subscribe, click that notification button. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more content for you guys on the Ringer NBA channel. Obviously, In My Feelings with Waz, uh, breakouts from all of our great podcasts. So, yeah, uh, watch this space and we'll talk to you guys soon.